One of the most common questions I'm asked as a psychedelic therapist is what if I have a bad trip? Anytime you consume psilocybin or any other psychedelic, the potential is there to have a challenging experience. It's how you navigate those challenges that can make the difference between a traumatic experience and one that is positively life-changing. In this video, I'm going to share seven simple pointers that can help you navigate a bad or challenging psychedelic experience. Welcome back to the Michael Meditations YouTube channel. I'm Denise and I'm a therapist here at Michael Meditations. I want to reframe this idea of the bad trip because again and again I've seen that a person's most challenging psilocybin experiences are the ones that reap the greatest benefits. In a survey out of Johns Hopkins University of nearly 2,000 people, 84% said their most challenging psilocybin trip was among the most meaningful and positively transformative experiences of their lives. This is strong evidence that bad trips aren't necessarily bad at all. They are incredible opportunities for healing and growth. This same study found that there were five main contributors to a bad or challenging trip. These are higher dose, younger age, absence of physical comfort during the session, absence of social support, and worse emotional state before ingesting the substance. So before even consuming psychedelics, you can help optimize your experience by managing your dose, your set, and the setting. But even with these precautions, you may still experience challenges. So here are seven pointers that will help you ride the waves of your experience without going under. The first pointer is don't trip alone. No matter how experienced of a psychonaut you are, we highly recommend that you prepare ahead and have a trusted friend or trip sitter with you. This person should be someone you trust completely, someone who's knowledgeable about psychedelics and will remain grounded and calm. When you're under the influence, you're going to be highly susceptible to the energy of people surrounding you. You want someone who's going to be empathetic, non-judgmental, and could provide support for you if you hit a rough patch. At the very least, you're going to need someone who can make sure you're well hydrated, can take you to the restroom if you need it, and will provide any physical comfort during your trip. The second pointer to help you navigate a challenging experience is to cultivate an attitude of openness versus resistance. The optimal approach as you enter your trip is one of curiosity, and openness to the experience so you can allow it to unfold naturally. Trust the mushroom and your own inherent healing wisdom. The more we resist and try to run away from the experience, the darker your trip may become. So if you can, practice relaxation and breathing techniques prior to taking the psychedelic, and then remind yourself during your trip to continue to breathe and to relax. Which brings us to number three, your breath. It may sound simplistic, but your breath is the best tool you have to keep you grounded and relaxed. When we tense up, we tend to constrict and our breathing becomes shallow. So as much as you can, try to breathe deep down into the belly and use slow, prolonged inhalations and exhalations. This can help you move out any pockets of tension or disharmony that exists anywhere in the body. The fourth tool we recommend when the going gets tough is to move your body. If you're lying down, try sitting up. Try stretching, try some yoga moves, have a friend help you walk around, change your location, go sit near a tree, 
Try connecting with the earth. Bare feet on the ground can be tremendously grounding for you. Anything you can do to help move the energy. And the more you release, the less discomfort your body will hold. Another strategy that can be helpful is to change your surroundings. It's essential that you feel safe during your trip. So if things start to go south, consider some of the following changes. If you're in a crowd, switch to a quiet location with less stimulation. Go out in nature, change your environment. If you're focusing on the outside world, you may want to try to turn your focus inward. Conversely, if you're wearing an eye mask or your attention is turned inward, try turning your attention to the outside world. Nature is inherently calming. So if you're outside, focus on a tree or the sky. If inside, try focusing on a flower or a beautiful crystal. Our sixth tip is to have an anchor or a physical object nearby that can help ground you. This can be something like a worry stone or a stuffed animal. Some voyagers make themselves a sign prior to the trip saying something simple like just breathe or you are safe. If you have a picture of a loved one nearby, that also may help to ground you in moments of difficulty. The seventh tip is music. Many people choose to use a playlist during their psychedelic trip. Music acts as a kind of safety net, so choose wisely. We highly recommend you don't choose music with words because that can lead you down an unintended path. There are many curated psychedelic playlists out there, such as the Johns Hopkins playlist, so download one of those to your listening device prior to your trip. So to recap, a challenging trip isn't necessarily a bad trip at all. Most voyagers say that their most difficult trips are the ones that reap the most enduring benefits. Mushrooms are a safe medicine if used wisely and with intention. There's a reason people say that one mushroom trip can be like 10 years of therapy. You do have to feel it to heal it, but with a few precautions and a sense of safety and support, you too may find that your bad trip was among the most healing experiences of your life. Thanks so much for tuning into this video. We hope you found it helpful and we'll see you next time.